Hi guys, Fred here from Amp Math and Engineering, and this video is on the moment distribution method. So pretty straightforward method, third year civil engineering, indeterminate structures, and not too hard. Uh, it does involve filling a table out, but uh, we're just going to do a simple one here. We'll explain what it is, and then we'll do a more difficult one later. Okay, so we have a continuous beam here, and we're asked to calculate the final end member moments okay, of this beam. So uh, when we separate it into A, B, and B, C, what are the end uh, moments when the beam is cut like that? So a couple things here on the left that I'll be referring to. I have uh, the formulas for the stiffnesses. So uh, the moment distribution method is a, is a method that just takes into account the stiffness, the bedding stiffness of each member. That's how it calculates uh, end moments. So uh, we have k equals i over l if the far end is fixed. So if we have fixed hinge, for example, and uh, for a far end that is hinged, so we have like a hinge here and then a hinge on the other side and a continuous beam, that's going to be 3 over 4 times i over l for k. So uh, the very first step that we're going to want to do, okay, uh, in this question is we're going to, in any moment distribution question, is solve for k for the, uh, the members, okay, so the, the part, the different sections of the beam. So let's go ahead and do that now, all right? So um, EI, as you can see, is constant. I'm just going to come down here and do that. Okay, so we have k for, we're going to say AB, okay? So k for this section here. Okay, let's just follow the formula. We have I over L, so we have I, which is constant, and our L is 25 for that portion. Very good. Finally, let's do KBC. Okay, so we'll do K for this portion, and that's just simply I over 30, right? I over L. Okay, and uh, now we've got to take a look at this distribution factor, okay? So this is where the kind of moment distribution method comes in. And when we have a continuous beam here, all right, and we have a roller support or a pin support in the center, okay, we're going to have to distribute um, the moment, okay, to the supports on the left and the right of it, okay? And how we distribute that or how we know how much to distribute is based on this distribution factor, okay? So we're going to have to find the distribution factor for the left side of the supported B and the right side of the supported B, okay? So uh, that's what we're gonna do next. That's the second step. So the distribution factor is uh, K for the section divided by the sum summation of the Ks for the whole beam. So we have K here, uh, AB, which is I over 25, okay? And that's just going to be I over 25, again, plus I over 30, okay? And that is going to be equal to, if we cancel the i's, okay, and just put that in your calculator, you're going to get a value of 0 0.545. Okay, and that distribution factor is for the left side because we used i over 25, so the a, uh, k, a, b on the top. And we're just going to write that in these boxes here, okay? So, and before we continue, let's just take a look at what we've done here. So I did, uh, what I did is I extended from the supports lines down this way, okay? At the ends here, we have fixed supports. So fixed supports don't transfer moment. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, distribute any moment. It takes all the moment and it doesn't give it back. But uh, B is going to be transferring moments because it's a roller, okay? So uh, that's good to note. So, um... So because the roller is distributing moments, I put this little box here and we need, as we know, as I explained before, to the left and to the right of the roller, okay, you're going to have a distribution factor. So that's what these boxes are for. Okay, for a fixed support, the distribution factor is zero always. So we, we don't even usually write that, but I'll just do it just because, like I said, fixed supports don't distribute moments. So let's continue. So, uh, and let's find the distribution factor for BC. Okay, so or the, the right side of B, right? Go ahead and do that. So we have I over 30 over I over 30 plus I over 25, okay? And that is going to be equal to canceling the I's, 0 0.455, okay? And as you'll see, the distribution factors for any joint should always add up to one, okay? So they do here. If they don't, you made a mistake. There's no exception to that rule. Okay, so first thing, uh, after we've found the distribution factors, is we simply just have to find the fixed end moments. So I put the fixed end moments up uh, the table on the screen. If you want to pause and try and calculate the fixed end moments out for these two cases, A, B, and B, C. And what you're going to do is for A, you know, A, B to the left and A, B to the right, you're just going to write them in the first row of the table below the distribution factors, okay? I'm not going to show you the calculation for the fixed end moments. Uh, I'm just going to show you the final answer. If you want to try it on your own, go ahead, but it's just plugging into formulas and, you know, that's kind of boring. So let's ignore that because we're here to learn the moment distribution method, not how to do fixed end moments. I think we did a video on that before, so if you're interested in uh, refreshing on how to do fixed end moments, just um, 
just take a look at that video. Okay, so uh, in the first row, we have our fixed end moments, okay? Now, this is uh, kind of where the trick comes in, okay? And I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step step how to fill out this table. Okay, so what we're gonna do, okay, because the distribution factors here are zero, okay? So we're not going to do anything with these, but we have distribution factors here. So what do we do? Well, all you need to do is take the numbers that are the fixed end moments that are um, to the left and to the right of the joint that are, is going to be distributing the moment, and we're going to add them together. So we have 150 minus 43.2, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply it by the left, and then we're gonna multiply it by the right, and we're gonna put those numbers down below, okay? So we have uh, 106.8 times 0.545. Okay, so that gives us 58.2. And you have to remember, whatever number you get here, you need to change the sign. So this is positive, it now becomes a negative. So that's gonna be our second um, second row in this, uh, in this table, and that's called balancing the joint at B. So we're going to put our 58, negative 58.2. Okay, and then finally, we'll do exactly the same thing. Add 150 to ne negative 43.2 and we're gonna multiply by 455 this time. And as you'll see, we're gonna get 48.6, and we're going to change the sign on that, so we have negative 48.6. Okay, and as you can see, I mean, you can do it here, you can multiply negative 150 by zero, and you're gonna get a zero here, so that's why there's nothing here, and that's why there's nothing here. So, next we need to do the carryover. This is kind of the confusing part, okay? It doesn't require a little bit of understanding, but uh, just kind of, if you memorize how to do it, that's good enough. So let's go ahead and start the carryover, okay? So we're going to carry if we have a, like I said, if we have a continuous beam, and even if there's a hinge on the end, but in this case we have a continuous beam and a hinge in the center, this hinge is going to transfer a moment over here and it's gonna transfer a moment over to A, okay? There's no transfer from a fixed to a hinge. Remember that, the fixed takes all of the moment and develops it as an internal force. The hinge transfers it out, okay? So, and how we transfer that moment or how we carry over that moment is we take half of it, okay? So B is going to carry over to C and it's going to carry over half of its moment, okay? So negative 48.6 divided by two and this time we're just gonna keep the sign the same. Don't change the sign, okay? So we have negative 24.3 down here and this is going to carry over to the fixed support, negative 58.2 divided by two. So M over two, we're always carrying over M over two. It never changes. Okay, so that's done. Now, if we had, for example, a roller here and we needed to transfer another uh, moment back or et cetera, et cetera, okay, in that case, we would, uh, we would need to continue the question. But as you can see, we've, trans we've carried over the, uh, the moment from the joint over to uh, the fixed supports, okay? The fixed supports don't transfer anything back, so this question is done. Uh, in the next question, when we do a more tricky one, you'll see that this will come back and then it'll go back again, et cetera. But in this question, once we get to this point, we're finished, okay? So, uh, and once we're finished, okay, so once there are no more values under the carryover joint, which is B, we're gonna go ahead and sum all of these uh, columns here, and we're going to arrive at our final answer, so. Okay, so 64.8 minus 29.1, 1.4 plus 101.5, 1.5 minus 1.4, and we have negative 174.3. These are all moments and they're kill, uh, kit feet. Okay, and these are the member end moments, okay? And another point, another uh, reference point in which to check is that you're gonna want to go ahead and check that at uh, any, any roller support, the sum of the moments at the roller support needs to equal zero, okay? So uh, if you were to add all the moments up at a roller, it can't have a value, it needs to be equal to zero, that's just basic statics. So uh, just remember that, okay? That's a good check. Now, finally, the last part of this question, now that we have the member end moments, is to draw our free body diagram. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that out for you here. All right, and this is AB, and this is BC. Now, um, if we just go ahead and this, you know, this is just really understanding the uh, sign convention, okay? So remember, uh, the positive moment is when the top part is in compression. If we cut on this side, you remember the positive sign convention is counterclockwise and we have a positive moment here. So that is 35.7 kip feet, okay? We have a negative moment here, okay? So that's going to be 101.4. I'll just write that like that, okay? And now we have a positive moment here, okay? We know the sign convention for the left side of the beam is counterclockwise. 
we have our 18 kip foot here, or kip force there. And finally, we have a negative moment here of 174.3 kip feet. And we still have our distributed load of two kip per foot. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's free body diagram. And what we've done there is we've gone ahead and labeled all of our forces and our member end moments. And that's pretty much it. So really straightforward question. Uh, if there's a couple things that are confusing for you, let me do another question that's a little more difficult and hopefully it'll make more sense to you then. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe.